cast your ballot hope for the best good afternoon my name is Bahman Yazdanfar and this is Voters Echo a weekly program brought to you to discuss uh, political social and economical uh, issues that affects uh, Torontonian Ontarian and Canadian as whole Although, as you know, in the last two months or two, uh, the show has been not really regularly broadcasted weekly, mainly due to the fact that in spite of the multiple uh, invitation I sent to our elected officials, uh, whether it is in the city or in Queen's Park, uh, regardless of the party they are affiliated to, they stop even responding yeah or nay. So that tells you the level of the courage and confidence our elected officials have. Uh, a couple of the disclaimer, this show is run by me, it's produced by me. The airtime, however, is uh, donated by Dr. James Sears as part of his credit to that channel's studio, which I appreciate him in advance. I am neither member nor sympathizer of ma any mainstream parties provincially or federally I do not necessarily agree or disagree to part or whole of the subject matter is discussed in our show. The purpose of the show is education for you to understand different point of views, so you yourself to come to a conclusion next time around when there is an election, so use your uh, rights carefully and um, with uh, rather more education. Uh, it, I don't make any money off this show. There is no financial uh, uh, reward for me in this show. However, those who want to help me so far, I haven't had my, many, but uh, those who want to help me financially or may, uh, in a form of the uh, human resource, please uh, just uh, drop me a, a line or two through our uh, website, voterseco.com, and I will be more than happy to respond and communicate with you. Uh, for today, we have a guest, a returning guest, uh, Mr. M Lawrence McMurray, who has been in our show a couple times. Uh, last time, I believe, was about uh, four or five months ago. I'm not sure, three, three or four months ago, rather. And uh, we discussed about the issue of the freedom of speech and how people uh, try to uh, enforce their own opinion, especially right, uh, left-wing uh, ideology, uh, using the right-wing uh, kind of the uh, structure as a reason to let uh, other people what to say, not what not to say, what is right and what is not right. However, as we discussed in the last show. The, this issue was so important that now is escalated to the level of government, and that is why I asked Mr. McMurray to come McCurry. here. McCurry. McCurry, sorry. McCurry, because we have yeah, two you, friends. You got yeah. it wrong yeah. twice. I had yeah. To, yeah, you have to tell me at the beginning. Yeah. McCurry, so, so uh, to discuss that in depth. Lawrence, welcome to the show. Uh, and glad I, to be here. Bob. My apology for it, because I have a friend who is actually come to here, and he's McMurray. Ah. <laughs> that is why. Different, different clan. <laughs> different clan, yeah. Different clan. Okay. Now, if you remember last time we were here, there were uh, social justice warriors and the uh, uh, Kinsella uh, clans, and all of those, uh, uh, a small group of people, they uh, trying to harass uh, your war news. But that issue didn't stop then, and now it has been escalated to much higher level. Can you just uh, well, let our audience what uh, was yeah, the may, story? May, maybe I should give a little bit of history here definitely, so people definitely. understand what we were talking about. Um, the first time that I, I did your show, Voters Echo, we were, we were talking about uh, free speech and freedom of the press ago. in general. It was, yeah, it was about a year or so yeah, ago. Yeah. Um, at that time, we, we, we were discussing your ward news, which had been, uh, uh, it's a paper, it's a, it's a, it was an East End paper that had been around forever. But I, uh, a controversial figure, uh, James Sears, who, who is the uh, benefactor of this show as well, who mm -hmm. pays for the airtime, uh, took over as editor of your ward news. And we sat down and we discussed uh, you know, the, the, the problems that he was having at the time. 
Well, being a writer, that, that sort of spurred me, you know, I, if there's trouble, I, I want to be part of it. Yeah, but, 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 so but I, I, life I, would be dull. Life would be dull. <laughs> and and it, was a, it was an issue of free speech and, and freedom of the press, which is, which is something that's, that's very key to my being. So I, I submitted some articles to your ward news and, and have since become a, a staff writer. So that, you know, basically that means I write an article or two for, for almost every issue of the paper. Um, now, what originally happened was uh, Sears had published a picture of Pierre Trudeau in a Nazi uniform. And there was a, a Jewish letter carrier who objected. That was, that was over a year ago. Right, who objected to that. Well, that's, that's when this trouble started, was, was about a year, a year and a bit ago. So he objected to this picture of, of Pierre Trudeau in a Nazi uniform, which, you know, really wasn't that big a stretch anyway, because, uh, you know, when Trudeau was in college, there's this story about uh, uh, Trudeau when he was in college that he rode around Montreal in a, in a Nazi uniform on a motorcycle. So, you know, it wasn't really that big a stretch, but, uh, you know, th this Canada Post worker, um, objected to having to deliver the paper, um, for, filed a grievance with his union. Um, Canada Post started going over each and every issue of the paper Ever since. with a fine-tooth comb. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, because the, the claim was is that it was hate literature, that it was a Nazi rag, and, and it, it's n nothing like that. So uh, I started writing for the paper just to, to get in on what was going on. And uh, I, was, I was literally shocked at the opposition to this, this small satirical newspaper. Um, what had happened was uh, a liberal talking head, uh, uh, a consultant for the Liberal Party, a guy by the name of Warren Kinsella, who, who we're all aware of, um, sort of spearheaded a campaign against the newspaper. His, his, uh, his take on it was that he objected to this, th and, and he, uh, you know, like, like your typical left, they've got a very limited toolbox, you know, so if, if the left oppose you, you're you're automatically branded an anti-Semite, a racist, uh, a homophobic, misogynist. <laughs> uh, they even threw in anti-Muslim in, in this. And how you could be, you know, uh, anti-Semitic and anti-Muslim at the same time? I've got no or idea. Or homophobic or Islamophobic. Yeah, yeah, all at the same time. So you know, they 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 basically they nailed the paper with with every every you know left hard slur they could come up with um, and and also started a campaign against the editor James Sears himself you know saying that that James Sears was a was a, a defrocked doctor uh, you know he was a he was in the army at one time he was a medical doctor um, he, he doesn't practice medicine anymore you know there was there was an incident that he freely admits to um, and it was going back to 20 some oh, odd yeah, years ago. Oh, yeah, it was going yeah. back 20 years. See, here's the point. The guy's an editor of a small paper. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just because you make a mistake, you know, in your life doesn't mean you don't ever get to work again. Well, right? if it was the case, then we have to uh, kick out all of our, uh, our politicians. Oh, well, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, Warren Kinsella started this this group of concerned residents. Uh, what is his beef? What is, his, what, is he, what, is he, what is he gaining at that time? What do you think was, was his gain out of it? Well, you know, I can tell you exactly what Warren Kinsella's motivation was. The very first article um, that, that uh, I published in the paper, there was another article published by, by someone called Shep the Talking Dog. Oh, yeah, he's famous. He's yeah. very famous. He's retired, uh, a the, retired the cop, a the retired police dog. dog yeah. <laughs> well, Shep the Talking Dog wrote an article about Warren Kinsella called uh, Why I Get No Lefty Love. 
from Warren Kinsella. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was a tongue in cheek article uh, written by a talking dog um, about, about why he gets no, no, no lefty love from Warren Kinsella. And, and in that article, he pointed out that Warren Kinsella got a, a very large amount of money from the uh, disgraced McGinty government as they were on their way out of office. It was in the other mainstream papers too. It was in the Globe and Mail. Yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, the article cited, the dog cited the Globe and Mail so, as, so, as a so source it was nothing, for the story. It was, it was not like, like well, someone well, would say you know, something. The, the dog went a little bit further and, and noted that, that uh, Kinsella had uh, rooted this money through a, a business that he, that he doesn't often use. Uh, more than likely in an attempt to, to screw his partners at Daisy Consulting out of... <laughs> oh, Daisy Consulting, his first wife was his partner on the other one, wasn't he? Uh, well, exactly, but he, he had another company that, you know, like half the money went through his first wife's business, the other half of the money he put through this obscure business. So the issue is really money, it has well, nothing you know, to do. You know, the, I'm talking about what Warren Kinsella's yeah. personal motivation yeah. is. Like, you've got to wonder, when somebody spends so much time and they're so vehement in coming after this paper, you know, it, it's certainly not because Warren Kinsella has, you know, community standards, okay? Warren got pissed off because the dog reported that he boned his partners at Daisy Consulting out of this money he got off the McGinty gang, okay? Um, I think that's what motivated Warren Kinsella. Okay. More than anything else. But anyway, what, what ended up happening was Warren Kinsella put together this, this group of concerned citizens. And, of course, you know, it was the, the usual excuses. Oh, what if the children see this? Or, or what if somebody is, is offended by seeing this in their children mailbox? See this? I saw a picture on Facebook just this morning. The children was marching behind of the this dominatrix kind of the costume on the yeah, street. Yeah, 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 leather, <laughs> leather guys with... With, <laughs> with the, some with, people with like using, on, on with leashes. a leash on them and then leather... Marching <laughs> half naked down the street <laughs> I mean, with a group of school children following. I think that is a Miss Wynn. Oh, well, no, I mean... Miss education system. See, you're wrong. <laughs> Warren Kinsella approves of that because that's the gay community who can do no wrong, right? You know, it's our paper that Warren Kinsella's got a problem with. And, of course, you know, they call anything that, that they oppose uh, anti-Semitic or, 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 you know, hate speech, when in reality what the paper is, is it's, a, it's a satirical alternative newspaper that does alternative news type stories and has been very critical of the liberal government. Uh, the, paper, the paper calls itself an anti-Marxist publication. I believe you've got a copy. Oh, yes, uh, uh, the copy. Okay, I want to, you get the, the story to this copy, and then I will show it. Okay, well. Yeah. Because this copy is the whole thing that we are here today. Well, exactly. <laughs> so what happened was um, uh, uh, Warren Kinsella got his, his, his little group of, uh, of, privileged, <laughs> of, of privileged, you know, stuck up Beach's housewives together. Okay. And, uh, you know, his group of SJW warriors, social justice warriors, and they mercilessly went after every advertiser the paper had, calling these people up saying, you know, oh, do you know who you're dealing with? Do you know who the editor of that paper is? You know, and, and it wasn't just phone calls. If the phone calls didn't work, they went down there in person. And, and, you know, most of the people who advertise in a small community paper like that um, really can't afford that kind of, of, of harassment. Of course you not. Know, you know, they're a small business, these, they don't want problems. You got a problem. small business, you got these creepy SJWs coming in and hassling your customers. And, you know, basically either you agree with them or they'll put you out of business too. Yeah. So the paper lost all of its advertising. I remember I saw some papers uh, from Union as well to send to them too. Union of the Postal. Well, Road, yeah, and then the unions, and you know how. So you know they how spend money on that too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's a big ongoing campaign against the newspaper, 
and the unions from the, the postal unions were in on it. And um, at one point, the, the politicians had some money that they had to, to move around. Oh, yes, I wrote an um, article. So they, they, held, thoughts, they yeah. held a, a press conference half a block away from the newspaper's office. They didn't invite the newspaper. Otherwise, I would have been more than happy to cover this, this little press conference of theirs. He would have been arrested. Uh, where, where, where MP Arthur Potts yes. gave half a million dollars of our tax money to basically to friends of the Liberal Party. Yeah. Okay. Four hundred forty-nine thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. It was almost. It was like just you know. It was like a happy meal shy of half a million dollars, yeah. right? Um, you know, at first he he said something about giving this to police organizations that are going to to police hate speech on the internet. Turns out it didn't go to the police. It went to some some liberal backroom boys that 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 supposedly run some little rinky-dink website in Burlington now I had a look at these guys website and I'll tell you right now it's not worth half a million dollars well okay well it's taxpayers money <laughs> well even in in taxpayers money term though the website's not a half million dollar website and and just who this organization that Arthur Potts and the Liberal Party gave this money to and and what they're doing with the money you know, God only knows Right, but it wasn't the police. They they sort of made out that it was a uh, you know money they were giving to the police for a particular reason. For the audience, Arthur Potts is the MPP for the beaches. East for York. for beaches for 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 the area where the office uh, was. The pa yeah, paper. So okay, so now you've got now you've got Warren Kinsella's social justice warriors. You got you got union rep radical union representatives. You got politicians that are moving around dirty money, and and they're all getting together and they're ganging up on this little newspaper. community newspaper. Well, you know they thought it was the end of it when they got rid of all the advertisers, but uh, for some reason the paper just kept publishing anyway. And getting and, better and bigger. And getting better and bigger and the uh, expanding the uh, delivery area. Well, this, this vexed them to no end, because they, first of all, they, they, were, they demanded to know where the money was coming from. How can we afford to keep publishing with no advertisers? And they wanted to know who was printing it and who was publishing it. Who are they? Uh, Warren Kinsella oh, you know, they, and his, his, posse. And his yeah, okay. little, his little yeah. posse of idiots, yeah. right? Um, you know, and, and of course, they want to know who the printer is. And, you know, so they could go and, and, and put pressure on him, right? Basically, these guys are thugs, okay? They're thugs that think that they can control society by, by threatening people. And we just kept publishing the paper anyway. Well, uh, at some point, you know, James was uh, concerned that it was taking up too much of his time, and, and he, he wanted to get into more of doing... This sort of thing, yeah. where where, where Media, we, they're, they're, we put out, uh, you know, video and radio and mm. internet, and you know, more so than just the newspaper. So, <clears throat> the decision was made to start publishing on a quarterly basis, which was the first one last last spring. spring. Yeah. So we we published the spring issue, and then you know. Uh, when you're publishing a paper like that on a month-to-month -month basis, it's a lot of work. So that sort of gave us a, a bit of time to sit back and take a breath and, and you know, get ready for the, for the summer issue. Now, in the meantime, these people kept up their campaign. And, and this is a, make no mistake, this is a campaign of intimidation. They were intimidating the newspaper. They were intimidating the newspaper staff. They were intimidating the advertisers to the point that there was most, vandalism in the most office. Of the, I'm getting to that. You know, on top of this, they started by breaking the windows of the office. Yeah, they yeah, started yeah, yeah. throwing bricks through the windows of the office. So after, you know, a, a couple of times of them doing that, we just boarded the office up. And then they started paint. you know, here's what's really funny. They're calling, they're calling our paper a Nazi publication. And what are they doing? They're spray painting swastikas on the outside of our building. You know, they're, they're, they're calling it a, 
uh, a Nazi hate club and painting swastikas. Last month, they, they painted a giant penis with, with hair on the balls, which I thought was very artistic. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, and, 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 and put Nazi... Considering Nazi, a short period of window of the time they have yeah. to do that. <laughs> no, it, was, it was quite an art, artistic <laughs> little piece. And, and, and spray-painted Nazi gay club across it. So now they're not only insulting, you know, uh, everybody by calling us Nazis, but the, the, they're, no, they're insulting no, their, their homosexual base No faith well. to their own principle, then. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, these, 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 these lefty principles go right out the window when they're attacking mm. somebody else. Using the same language that they are objecting to. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're objecting to... They're, you see, now here's the thing. Uh, also, there was a petition that got started up. Which by, we discussed. By, by a woman I think we Kelly discussed Fairchild. exactly after the spring edition. So it is three or four months ago we sat together. Right. Yeah. So the, uh, they, they brought out this, this petition by Kelly Fairchild. And, you know, the interesting thing about that petition is, is I went through the first four or five pages of it. And um, everybody who signed that petition was from out of town. They but were you don't signing distribute those Montreal those. and Abbotsford and but you the know, paper Australia is and New Zealand. And they're all talking, oh, this nonsense. But they, how could they have read the paper? Even if the, uh, the petition didn't even list a website. So, you know, they couldn't have even gone to the website and looked at it. Which, which goes for saying that, you know, once somebody like Warren Kinsella or or Arthur Potts, the MP, you know, they come MPP. out and they, MPP. Yeah. They, they come out and they label this Nazi hate speech, right? Yes. And, and by labeling it Nazi hate speech, basically what they're doing is they're, they're carving a groove in everybody's brain. They might as well take a big rusty nail and carve a groove in everybody's brain because as soon as you hear your word news, you're going to think Nazi hate speech. Oh, they call me that, too. Yeah, just, well, be, yeah. just because I wrote an article about Wynn or Mr. Potts. <laughs> well, that's it, right? I mean, and, and in my opinion, I write for this paper. And, and I'll tell you right now, my, my father fought in the Second World War. Mm -hmm. crawled across Holland on his belly and, and liberated, you know, Nazi work camps. Um, I Personally, I'm offended of, of him calling me. And then I started getting hate mail by, from Warren Kinsella. He sends me an email one Sunday morning, and the first thing he says to me is, Are you a Holocaust denier? Well, you know, it's not that it's any of your business, Warren. But no, I'm not. Yes, you are. And why? What is his gig? What is his ta his gig as an individual? Whether or not you are Holocaust denier or not, but what is his? Well, his no, the guy wrote a book. The guy wrote a book about some low-hanging fruit group of Nazis, and that's his big claim to fame. Maybe he is trying to to re, to uh, to redeem the loss that he had over the books, unsuccessful books or unsuccessful writing. No, no, book, not books. Book. book. Okay. Right. Book. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And and so this guy sees. Nazis. So that is why it was not books. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This this guy sees Nazis under the bed, you know. To him, everybody who's who's not in his political camp is a is Nazi. a Nazi. Exactly. So, okay. you know, the, the paper's been branded with, with a whole bunch of, of garbage, okay. you know, that basically comes from Warren Kinsella, and he, and he did so he uh, like for it. personal reasons. So what's happened uh, in last uh, development in the last three, four weeks? Ah, <coughs> so, so what happened was our, our summer edition... And before you answer that, up until spring, as I recall, there was no charges, no complaint. There Even has in never, not, never been any charges. There has never, never been, been criminal been, charges laid against Or the any paper. charges for that matter. Any charges okay. at all. So the paper came <coughs> at 300,000 300, plus, distributed by Canada Post at the, uh, at the springtime. Right. Okay. Right. Now it is the summertime. Well, now it's coming up on the summertime. Okay. It's coming up to, to where we're just about ready to 
to release the summer issue. Okay. <clears throat> now, during this time, uh, Warren Kinsella brought in his, his anti-racist super friends. You know, because cause Warren Kinsella, you know, uh, he's so delusional, he thinks he's some sort of comic book superhero. So he, Is he? What, a comic book superhero? No, comic. Oh, he's a clown. <laughs> yeah. He's a clown, in my I opinion. I asked him to, twice to come to my show. The second time he he's blocked me. He's a coward. He, he blocked me. <laughs> he, I've, been sending him, I've been sending him tweets for the last three days, challenging him to come on this show with me and, and, and debate in an open forum. Well, you need a pair of brass <laughs> balls, my friend. Yeah, he's a coward. Okay. Warren Kinsella is a coward, okay? So um, he called in his, his, his anti-racist super friends to help him out with this campaign against Your Word News. Okay. The first person he called in was professional Jew Bernie Farber. Now, Bernie Farber was, was the head of the National Jewish Congress. That's why I call him a professional Jew. Um, he's now the head of the Mosaic Institute. <coughs> uh, uh, I'm sure they get government money somewhere. But uh, Bernie Farber is, is, like Warren Kinsella, is, is a man who's professionally offended for a living and uh, indirectly has his hand in your pocket. <coughs> both Warren Kinsella and Bernie Farber are both people that make their living off the taxpayer in an indirect manner which means they make their money through government grants, <coughs> consulting, um, that sort of thing. So, so why they, don't they just pay, stay and do their job instead of harassing people and small papers? Well, I mean, you Apparently know. they are not getting that much of a job in these days. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. so, so both Bernie <coughs> Farber and Warren Kinsella are people who are professionally offended for a living with their hand indirectly in your pocket. So they are opportunists based on what you're saying. They're, they're political opportunists yeah, okay. is what they are. Okay. They're political opportunists. Um, so Bernie Farber, from his, from his high moral ground, uh, uh, write, writes a, a, a scathing article about uh, your war news. And he, and he published this, this letter, uh, this, this article, in Now Magazine, in between, the, uh, in between the, it was the marijuana edition of Now Magazine. So from his, from his high horse, he, he passed down judgment with this scathing article somewhere in between the, the, the marijuana stories and the hooker ads, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, in Now Magazine, which if you ask me, is a lot racier than your ward news. I mean, your ward news. You don't news, want your kids to see that. No, music. no, your ward news doesn't carry ads from <laughs> prostitutes, you know, or, or stories that, that, that tell people they should break the law. Okay. Okay. This is where Bernie Farber puts his article about us. Well, it, it, maybe right? it is the, the highest level they, he can then, get. <laughs> and then finally, they called in their third super friend. A guy by the name of Richard Warman. Now, Richard Warman is an Ottawa lawyer whose claim to fame is he's brought more, more cases in front of the Human Rights Commission than any other lawyer. He's so he's another ambulance chaser kind uh, of thing. Well, he's won like 10 or 13 cases against easy, low-hanging fruit Nazi groups or something uh, in, the, in the Human Rights Court. Yeah, he's famous in his, he's one of these guys that are famous in his own mind. Mm -hmm. his, his big claim to fame was he kept uh, uh, David Icke from speaking in the country. Oh, the, from England. Right, yeah. David Icke from England, yeah. who, who, who basically talks about uh, uh, government corruption, banking, and uh, uh, how the Queen is a, is a lizard alien or mm -hmm. something. Uh, just, you know, stuff that's not going to hurt anybody. So, so Richard Warman's big claim to fame was he kept, he kept dangerous David Icke out of the country. You know, again, calling him an anti-Semite. 
You know, it's funny. I found this out the last few days. Anybody who writes about the most evil bankers in the world, the Rothschild family, automatically gets called an anti-Semite. Now, I, I find that interesting, that, that somehow they've, they've brainwashed all of these people into thinking that if you talk about this banking family, you're, you're, you're talking about all Jews. Well, it is an old, uh, old style of the opera, opera, operation of the governments from Romans' time. They just uh, spread b bad word uh, accusation, and then after a while, it gets its own life of its own. Yeah. Well, any, anybody, anybody who points out that the that the Rothschilds own most of the central banks in the world automatically gets called a. Uh, before uh, an you, before you continue reason. that, and you know uh, that's like that's like if you if you call me an a-hole, does that mean all Irishmen are a-holes? Yeah, well, they, they, apparently they, they, they. But uh, Lawrence, before you continue, your, uh, I just want to ask something uh, pop up to my mind with the way that you were putting all of this uh, sequence of events and the people who uh, took a role on that and these events. What is the wh why a government or why people who are connected to government with almighty all of resources available to them? Why are they afraid of a local paper? Well, I'll tell you why. Because our our local little anti-Marxist newspaper is is like the child that said the king has no clothes. Oh, you know, okay. We 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 openly mock. Um, you know, cultural Marxism. Now, cultural Marxism, or, or political correctness, as people call it, is the control method. <coughs> it, it, it's a way to shut down opposition and discourse on any subject. Okay? You know, they don't... Uh, the, 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 the liberals, and this includes the, the current liberal government, have this globalist agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and they use every ethnic group, every, every cause that comes along, and they co-opt it. And, and, and they spin a, 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 a narrative, okay, that, that everybody's familiar with today. You know, uh, this, 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 this feminist narrative of of white male privilege, for example, which is total garbage. Mm -hmm. You know, this uh, on a, on a government level, they're they're pushing the 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 climate change hoax, yeah, my, trying uh, to say that 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 you know man-made carbon dioxide is is responsible for for killing the planet and it's changing the climate. That's garbage. It's total garbage and it's bad science. And and rather than then, you know, promote uh, scientists who disagree with this whole theory. Um, their solution to it is, Tax is, to call, is to label people who disagree with them cl climate change deniers, and they want to throw them in jail. But it's not just climate change. It's, it's third wave feminism. It's, it's this LGBTQ Q. community, you know, that we're all supposed to fall on our knees and worship. Well, you know, our paper is an anti-Marxist, anti-cultural Marxist paper. We believe that, that, you know, we should have the right to talk about yes, homosexuals. Yes. We should have the right to talk about immigration. Mm -hmm. We should have the right to talk about anything we see fit to talk about. And, you know, just because the liberal left have decided that these are the policies... Uh, and it's a slam dunk, and if you talk about these things, you're a racist, or you're an anti-Semite, or you're homophobic. Which is well, why, why can't we talk about, why can't straight white men talk about the gay community without being homophobic? But it is not what they say. They say if you talk about them, therefore you are. Exactly. Now that uh, is that which is one of the reasons why they've nailed the paper with. Them. That is the base of the uh, 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 the, uh, the the recent event. And can well, you... the, the the recent event. Okay, can you tell uh, just what, what that's happened? That's what we're here to talk about, yes. right? Okay, so the third guy they brought in was this Richard Warman. 
Now, now these three bozos, they're, they're like little clowns at the circus. Mm -hmm. Okay, they know they can't shut down the paper because we've done nothing illegal. We're not hate speech. If we were hate speech, the you police, would have been arrested. Yeah, I'd be telling this story to a judge instead of you. Yeah. Right? Um, so instead of going after the paper, Richard Warman files a suit against Canada Post, saying that Canada Post is delivering, you know, and he goes down the list of anti Semitic, anti Islamic, anti homophobic, anti this, anti that. And that we're all, and that they're also exposing Canada Post workers to all of this misogyny and uh, whatnot. You know, this anti-Semitic uh, paper. That so the the members of the uh, union that delivered the K -K, this paper are so weak that would be uh, that oh, it, yeah. that this paper could affect their livelihood and life. Huh? Uh, absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry Absolutely. for them. Absolutely. Okay. So, so he, he files a human rights complaint against Canada Post. Okay. Uh, MP Judy Foote, okay. who's in charge of pre procurement yeah. for the Canadian government. Yeah, Minister of Public <coughs> Works and Government Services. Right. That is the title I got. Minister of Government Works and Services. For our audience, I usually don't prepare questions, and I did not prepare any question, but I just printed the... Uh, letter uh, that she well, sent. Well, you did your to homework him. for yeah, the interview. Yes. Just a little. So, so she turns around to Canada Post and orders Canada Post to stop delivering our newspaper. Now, right away, like two days later, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association sent MP Judy Foote a very strongly worded letter. Yes, I read that. Telling read her that, that uh, <coughs> she can't legally do this. She can't decide. See, basically, what's, <coughs> what's happened here is, is we have the Liberal government, for all intents and purposes, killing a newspaper because Canada Post was our distribution. Every newspaper has a has a distribution. You either hire paper boys to go out and deliver it, or, or like Now Magazine, you put it in a box on the corner, which the government needs to that. give you permission for, and you need to pay the, the city space on the place where that box sits. Or like the Metro, who make a deal with the TTC to distribute their paper through the TTC, um, our paper, we paid Canada Post bulk mail service mm -hmm. to deliver our paper to, to a number of homes for free. Now, when we went on a quarterly, we expanded the delivery area out of this one little ward in, in East End Toronto to cover a good chunk of the East End of the city. It still wasn't total city coverage, but it was about uh, 350,000 homes, okay. give or take. So just before our summer edition is supposed to come out, Judy Foote orders Canada Post not to deliver the paper. How did she know that we are sending a new one? Well, it's a quarterly paper. She must have known that it was... Okay. But she hasn't seen that paper because the no, date... No, she, she hadn't seen the because paper. Because the date of the, uh, his, her letter is almost uh, 10 days before the printing. Well, apparently she waited like a week before... Uh, James Sears didn't even know about the letter until his postal carrier told him. He, oh. went, he went out to collect the mail one morning, and the, the postal carrier said to him, oh, I can't deliver your mail. His mail, his personal <coughs> mail. His personal mail. Why is that? Well, he's, he asked why. And, and they, ended up, they ended up giving him a copy of the letter. But what Canada Post has done is they've ordered uh, what Judy Foote, local MP Judy Foote, ordered Canada Post not only to not deliver the paper, <coughs> but also banned the editor, James Sears, and the publisher, Leroy St. Germain, mm -hmm. from using the mail. So now, now if one of these guys wants to write their old grandmother at Christmas time, 
they're not allowed to use the mail at all, period. Okay, uh, Lawrence, uh, this is the, this is, uh, I expect that you come with that, say that, because, as I said, it is the only pre pre show that I really prepared for that, to so not much, but a little. Uh, 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 I am just uh, going to a little bit, uh, just a very short uh, uh, paragraph of the Judy Ford. It says, whereas I have reasonable grounds to believe that James Sears is by means of mail either committing or aiding the commission of an offense in that he is sending or causing to be sent items that include hate propaganda in contravention of subsection 319-2 of the criminal code and or that include <coughs> the publication of the defamatory libel in contravention of section 300 of the criminal code. <coughs> I, hear, I therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me, that means Justin Trudeau will be probably given to, him, to her, under subsection of 43.1 of the Canada Post Corporation Act, prohibit the delivery of mail posted by James Sears or acting through an agent or acting under any other personal or firm name and or style. Now, what you said, it is written in her letter. However, under section that 43 of the Canada Post, when I checked that, they said in order to, to, to uh, protest the decision, you have to send them registered mail. If he is prohibited to send the mail, how can he send the registered well, mail? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, uh, basically they said you've got 10 days to appeal this. Uh, and, and of course you appeal to some little tribunal that she puts together of, of, of hand-picked people, her friends. So, I mean, it's a kangaroo court, so to speak. And, and how are you supposed to appeal if you're not allowed to use the mail, right? He's not allowed to use the mail, so he can't send a letter back to her saying, hey, I appeal this decision. Furthermore, it was an arbitrary decision. She's saying, oh, you've, you've committed the crime of, 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 what was it? What was it again? Um, a contravention with the... With the, what is that, contravention of subsequent criminal code that includes the publication of the defamatory libel. Uh, defamatory libel, that's her opinion. Yeah. Nobody has ever sued the paper or anybody at the paper, including the talking dog, for libel. So let me, uh, let me uh, get it straight. You know I am a dummy guy. I, am, I just, uh, people should talk nor, to me. Nor has criminal charges of any yeah. kind ever been laid against the paper. I, uh, so this is strictly her opinion. No, I understand. What I'm saying is people should tell me like I'm five years old. So a government, any government, in a democracy, whatever left of it, or at least electoral process that is being elected as a government and supposed to follow the rule of the law, that they dictate to people, they decide based on personal opinion of one person to prohibit the right of a citizen in this country. It goes even further than that, Bauman. Not only has this one person decided to arbitrarily take away the right to use the mail of two people and a corporate entity, okay, you're also talking about a government that is, that is, for all intents and purposes, killing a paper that was critical of them, okay? And, and the issue that didn't get delivered, I personally wrote an article comparing Pierre Trudeau and Sophie Gregoire Trudeau to, to Louis Pierre the or Fifth, Justin? Or Justin, excuse Sorry. me. Yeah. Justin and his wife Sophie to, to Louis the Fifteenth and Marie Antoinette. Because oddly enough, people said the exact same things about Louis the Fifteenth and Marie Antoinette as they're saying about Justin Trudeau. Okay, so you're talking about you're talking about uh, an MP killing a newspaper that was critical of of their we thought seeing their it. political party. Yeah, well, without without even seeing it, right? Exactly. Okay. 
the, the issue that you're holding in your hands yeah. right now I, I, is, can, is can the you, banned can, copy. Can you, uh, this Chris is this is the one this. that didn't get delivered. Now, by the way, we're, we're incurring real-time costs here. Um, by timing it the way she did, Judy Foote, um, uh, what happened was, first of all, we ended up printing 350,000 copies of that newspaper. She that, could that, have that stopped we, you before that you... That we can't deliver. So now they're sitting in a warehouse that we're paying to store them, probably end up burning these newspapers because by the time we do deliver them, they'll be outdated. You know, because you can't, you can't, uh, even a quarterly newspaper, it's only news for so long. Mm, of course. Right? Of course. So, I mean, there's, there's some real costs that are, that are <clears throat> being occurred here. And, you know, uh, frankly, I, I don't think the, the Liberal Party has the, has the right legally to do this. I read something a couple of days ago, again, I don't know about the accuracy of that, that there was a, there was a request from Liberal Party of Canada to Google to, to uh, perch part or some sort of the search about Harper's government from their server. Well, if I was Google, I'd tell the liberal government to... to, uh, to I don't know what is their relationship. What I'm saying is just the act, just the audacity of going and uh, trying to, pur if it is true, purging the history. Well, you know, you know what, Bob, and let's, let's look at what this really is, okay? All of this, this political correctness, all of these social justice warriors, all the crap they're teaching in universities. This is, this is, this is a method of, of redefining how Canadians think, how Canadians think of themselves as Canadians. Um, basically, the Liberal government, both provincially and federally, and to a large extent the Conservatives too, they're not totally no, no, they, they are, they're not totally uh, uh, they, they, they are not innocent Saint in this either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> are, are, are trying to manipulate the way the general public thinks. They're, they're, they're trying to drag this country to, to a globalized state. Just like the European Union, where you've got right now Britain's talking about getting out of Next the Thursday, Union. they're supposed to go to a referendum. Yeah, well, I mean, that was all put together by the elites, these, these globalists that want a one-world government. And this is, this is not some conspiracy theory. You, it's right out there. Um, the, the liberal government under Justin Trudeau and, and Kathleen Wynne um, kowtow to the UN. You know, they, they want to turn Canada's sovereignty over to a world body so that our laws can be made outside of Canada. You know, basically give up the Canadian sovereignty that my father fought for in the Second World War. And, and there are a lot of, you know, Canadian nationalists who don't think this, this global, because, you know, basically what they're shooting for is a globalized government and a globalized banking system. So, so that the elites that run this world can consolidate what they have, right? Is there a, and, and, and the liberal governments are working towards this. And one of the reasons why they can't stomach a paper like ours is because we don't play that game. We're not going to go down quietly. We're not going to allow them to take this country down that road, you know, where, where they hand our, our sovereignty what it means to be a Canadian over to some world body. I mean, that's, you know, this, this whole climate change hoax is also so, you know, Justin and, and Kathleen Wynne can, can bring in these, these cap and trade taxes, these climate taxes. Devil, now, 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 provincially now and federally. <laughs> yeah, provincially and federally. Now, now, think about it for a minute. They're saying, oh, humans create carbon dioxide that's destroying the world. So we're going to tax you for it. What's that going to do? Is that going to make people drive their car less or only run their refrigerator on certain days? No. They're trying to bring down our standard of living and, and get rich doing it. The government has become so corrupt in this country that it's, it's shocking. I mean, we used Governments. To Governments, all, all three levels yeah. of government yeah. are, are corrupt as hell. 
And, and I think what's happening is for too long, people who've spoke out uh, against this, this globalist plan, you know, have, have been deterred by political correctness. Oh, if you talk about the, if you talk about the Rothschild central banks, you're an anti-Semite. If you don't think naked men masturbating on Young, Young Street during Gay Pride Day is, is, is normal, you're homophobic. If you don't like the idea of millions and millions of, of, of Islamic refugees coming into Canada and imposing Sharia law, you're, you're, you're Islamophobe. Is, Islamophobe, right? And, and people just aren't buying this, this cultural Marxist garbage anymore. But some are, but a large number of them, they are. Oh, they sure, are, people, people that have been brainwashed through the university system or, or, or have bought into this, this, this regressive liberal agenda, you know, believe in this hogwash. Fine. People are allowed to believe whatever they want to. Lynn. People are allowed to believe whatever hogwash they want to. What they don't have the right to do is to ram it down my throat. And, and you know, so we, we write this paper. Uh, do people find it offensive? Yeah, these, these, these SJWs, these left-wing globalists, find it offensive. Well, I got news for you. I am getting offended every day that yeah, I receive I, yeah, a, yeah, ma yeah, a mail got, from my, my corrupt you. MP. You don't <laughs> have a right not to be offended, okay? You don't have that right. If that paper offends you, throw, throw it, it in out. the garbage. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. The same thing that I do with the brochures I get from my counselor or from MPP, because I'm pretty sure there is nothing in, in it to, to read. And, and, but by, this, by seeing their face and using my tax money to do that... You're triggered. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I am very, very offended. You, but you, I never call them and say, close that, that publication. Oh, oh get, get back into your safe space, Bomber. Uh, what safe space is that? I don't know. Is there any safer space left? Is there? Is let there let, any let safe me ask you. There, there, you, there used to be. Uh, well, those days, uh, my friend. <laughs> well, no, away. Yeah, I, I, I read, I read a piece yesterday. I think it was in the Huffington Post. Yeah. Where, where, where there was this black woman saying, "Oh, people of color should have space, safe spaces, away from where white people, where white people aren't allowed to go." Okay, you see, and and you know, I started thinking to myself, and and it was, didn't white people used to have those? They were called country clubs. Okay, but you see, that that statement by itself is the contradictory, because if the social justice well, warrior, because it's racist, but but according yeah. to them, only white people could be racist. Because if you are looking for diversity and multiculturalism, you cannot ask for the safe space, separate or segregation. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it, it's 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 all contradictions. It, it, the, the whole the whole recess, recessive left movement are contradictions. For example, only white people can be can be racist. racist well, right? well, even I, they, I am being uh, being uh, marked as a token non-white. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you're you're the token non-white of. of, but, but of let, let me uh, let me just say we are getting close to the end of the program. I want to make a comment on the last statement. You said that all three levels of the government are corrupt, and uh, and the issue of the globalism. In the last election, 2015, after the Justin Trudeau formed his uh, cabinet, and proudly says 50 percent are women, and that is the criteria to, to be a minister. Uh, when I look at them, look at the cabinet, probably 80% of the cabinet are inexperienced, inexperienced, newbies, newcomers, and they given a cabinet post. Now, if the globalists- because, because they have a vagina. Right? Well, because well, they have a well vagina, that, that is part of that. A, they've been given the, a cabinet post. Yeah, well, well, Never mind putting the person who's best suited to that job yeah, in yeah. there. Give it to somebody But, but, they but have my a question vagina. mostly is about that. Uh, uh, considering the, the issue of the globalists, that they call it conspiracy theory, the only conspiracy is in the hand of government because they have uh, resources available to them. Individual cannot have that. But let. If they want to order someone to do something or jump, and they jump without question, wouldn't it be ideal 
situ situation to put least experienced people in the cabinet minister position? Well, that's, that's exactly what they've done. That's exactly what they've done. I mean, I don't know about the history of Judy Foote, but uh, what I can see about this, even her, her own letter. There's nothing legal about that in, no, in they, any they, way, they, shape, or form. They, not only they, because I want to mention something, even in the act, the criminal act, the uh, code 319-2 that she's referring to, it says defense, no person shall be convicted of an offense under subsection 2 if he established that the statement communicated were true if in good faith the person expressed or attempted to establish by an argument an opinion on a religious subject or an opinion based on a belief in a religious text. Now, my question is, if they cannot be convicted, how can you prohibit something before even charging someone? Well, this is why the Canadian Civil Liberties Association sent her a strongly worded message like the next day. It's, it's, it's absolutely apparent for anybody with half a brain that Judy Foote uh, obviously has no understanding of what Apparently her job she, she entails. Apparently she has her foot in her mouth, don't yeah, Well, exactly. She has no idea of what her job uh, is involved in, nor does she have an understanding with the law. If she had shown that letter to one of the government lawyers that we pay so much money for, uh, before she sent it, I'm sure he would have laughed at her. By the way, isn't Kinsella and uh, Warren both our lawyers? Claim to be. Oh, okay. They claim to be. Uh, listen, hmm. I, 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 wouldn't <laughs> hire, I wouldn't hire Warren Kinsella to defend my dog, okay? Uh, if he's a lawyer, he's not a practicing lawyer. And, uh, you know, he's, he's threatened to sue me a number of times. And, and for yet, what? And for libel, of course. Well, because, what, because I, I call, well, well, what can he get out of you? Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He could sue me till the cows come home. He's not going to get diddly squat because I ain't got nothing. You know, I'm a poor writer who lives paycheck to paycheck. I make my living at nine cents a word. He's welcome to come over and... And, and, and get all of that. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's welcome to come over and, and take whatever I have. No, Warren Kinsella is a clown. Okay? He's a clown and... and you know, he doesn't even have, he doesn't even have the, the, the personal fortitude to sit here, come on this show, and sit in that chair and defend his position against me. So that, you know, I, I really don't think Warren Kinsella is uh, much of a lawyer, even though he claims to be one. We, I, we, based on my personal opinion, I don't know him, but based on what you say, what I have seen, what he has done, and all of his ilk uh, around him, uh, what I think, uh, based on my past experience, people who just looking for finding an opportunity to promote themselves oh, are, 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 are even less than a parasite. They are just a spy. They are hoping that to sponge on, uh, from other, on others, uh, at, uh, attach themselves to the host, and in this case, host is government. Well, the, yeah, but there's no question about where his money comes from. This guy makes his living off of politicians. And not only that. You know, he, he's, he's a campaign manager for them. He writes stories in the media for them, depending on which hat he's wearing that day. You know, he, 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 does, the, he does the bag work for people like Judy Foote and, and you know, tells them what to do. Would it, Judy Foote have sent that letter if it had not been for Warren Kinsella? So the real question is, is do you want... You know, dickhead social justice warriors like Warren Kinsella censoring your mail. Do you want guys like Warren Kinsella to decide whether you could read that paper or not? Or what you can say or what you cannot say. Well, yes. that's, that's where it's at right now. Uh, that's the situation. J J J uh, Chris, uh, how, how long? Uh, five? Oh, zero. Oh, we are We're cold. done. We are done. Uh, just the last uh, thing. Uh, uh, if this case is drag on, because I hope Miss Foot, get her foot out of her mouth and retract that uh, that prohibition, because that is that is the slippery slope of the democracy and freedom of speech. Uh, whether your father fought for that or whether those people right now fighting by uh, by by 
by being exposed. Well, I'm, I'm fighting to this, for freedom uh, of speech yes. by being here and talking. Well, about it. I, and I appreciate that. What I'm wondering is if this, if the, if she doesn't retract and this thing drags on, what would be the cost to the taxpayer for the legal and all of this thing? I have no idea, but you could bet it'll be a lot of money. You could bet she's costing the taxpayer a lot of money here. Okay. Legally speaking, I can't speak for the editor or the No, publisher. no, I'm talking from their I'm, side, I'm from just, government. I'm, government. Just, I'm just a writer. No, no, no. Uh, 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 so. indiv individual cannot fight with the but, government but, by, 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 uh, to that level unless you have uh, your very wealthy man. But, uh, but even if you're a wealthy man, you have to think if I want to throw good money after the bad. Oh, well, but, I'm sure this is going yeah, to court. Yeah, but, but if it goes, taxpayers are in a hook oh, uh, for about millions of dollars. They don't care about the tax money. They give it away like it's candy okay. to their friends. No. Thank you very much, Lawrence, for coming here. And uh, thank you for uh, clarifying all of these uh, uh, issues. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our program for uh, today, Monday, 20th of June, 2016. Although uh, the paper uh, is, uh, is not allowed to be delivered by Canada Post, uh, and while we are waiting to see if there is any other alternative method of delivery available to you, however, you can go to their uh, website, www.yourwordnews.com, and uh, download a copy and look at uh, uh, by yourself whether or not you like the content. Uh, just uh, just ma make a judgment. Is is worth it that your tax money should be wasted on a local paper just because the content uh, for some people is distasteful. Uh, thank you very much, and as usual, at the end of the program, uh, please take part in the, your electoral process, which is the only thing left of the democracy as, we, as I know it. Uh, be a volunteer, help your candidates, write to your MPs and representative, uh, elected representative, regardless of it, whether they respond or not. And more importantly, next election, come around, roll off your sleeves and become a candidate yourselves. Good night. The voters echo, let their voices be heard. Let us join together for a peaceful and better world, a place for everyone to have the say. Let the voters echo out today. Let the voters echo loud and so let the voters echo, let their voices be heard. Let us join together for a peaceful and better world, a place for everyone to have the say. Let the voters echo out today.